What's going on YouTube? Ryan and Alex back again for Dopamon. Today we need to talk about the last roster that was announced for the 2022 Olympic uh, Games for the men's tournament, Team Denmark. Uh, we took a couple days off there uh, doing rosters uh, just before the Olympics, but we do want to get Denmark out there and talk about you know possible line combinations, see who the players are, and uh, yeah, just give you a general overview. And, uh, of course, we've covered uh, all the Olympic rosters now. This is the last one, so go check those out if you haven't already. And, of course, drop a like and subscribe because we plan on covering uh, the Olympics. Uh, Ryan already has covered day one, uh, the, the, the women's game uh, between Canada and uh, China and Czechia and Switzerland. Those two games uh, covered them, so, uh, yeah. Without uh, further ado, let's get into Denmark here with our goaltenders. And I think the starter's obvious. Uh, we have Sebastian Dom, Frederick uh, Ditschau, and Patrick Galbraith. Uh, Dom, he, after Frederick Anderson of the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, Sebastian Dom is the best uh, active Danish goaltender. He's uh, uh, represented uh, Denmark a lot internationally. He's currently playing in the ICHL, the Austrian, uh, the top Austrian league, and uh, putting up a 920 save percentage is pretty good. Yeah, 202 goals against average as well. Mm -hmm. Behind him, I want to say Dichau, uh, Frederick Dichau Niesen. Uh, he's only 20 years old. He's a, uh, a 2019 draft pick by the Montreal Canadiens in the fifth round. But he's six foot five. He's big. He's currently playing in uh, Rogel for the SHL. He's uh, bouncing up and down between the Allsenskin. And uh, on uh, December 28th, he actually played his first SHL game. He uh, got put in late in the game, only played five minutes, stopped one shot. So he has <laughs> one save in the SHL. That is his entire uh, SHL career. Nice. And uh, uh, our last one, Patrick Galbraith. Uh, he's 34, he's older, he's got a lot of experience. I think he's only choosing to play in Denmark now because he might be you know, just older and wanting to retire, but he does have a lot of experience. I feel like because he's playing in a league under uh, Frederick Tichau, he's going to be the third string goaltender, but it could easily be a, a, tie, a, a tie for backup. Yeah, I, to me, tie always kind of goes to the veteran, but uh, I think you're right with the starter anyway in this case. Mm -hmm. Moving on to our first D pair, we have Jesper Jensen Abo and Oliver Joachim Larson. Two guys with three names on the back end there. Uh, Jensen Abo currently plays in the DEL. Uh, he's, I think, their best defenseman. Correct me if I'm wrong, probably their, their number one D going through this tournament. Um, currently playing the DEL, like I said, for the Penguin, where he's an assistant captain, 25 points in 38 games over there. 30-year-old, uh, he's more of a veteran. And we got Olivier Joachim Larson as well, 23 years old, a lot younger. Uh, Right-hand shot, so that pairs well with uh, Jensen Abo. Uh, currently playing Jokerit Liga. Jokerit, uh, sorry, not Jokerit, different team. Um, 31 games, 16 points over there. And uh, you're going to notice that most of this team was the qualifying team. Yeah. But uh, Oliver Yakim Larson, he's a guy that wasn't on that team, and I'm kind of surprised. I think he had this sort of this year's kind of like a breakout season for him. He is rather young, and we've noticed that other with uh, other than the American roster, uh, these teams have been relatively old. Yeah. So seeing a young D, uh, I, I really like that, especially on a team like Denmark that, you know, would have no business bringing someone so young uh, comparatively uh, to like Canada bringing McTavish, for instance. Yeah, it's uh, really, to me, it's really a testament to how much the Danish system has improved over the last couple mm -hmm. of years, too, uh, that they're able to bring some of these young kids, that they're good enough to come to the Olympics of all mm -hmm. tournaments, right? So, um the Danish system obviously been a huge improvement over the last decade, and uh, Larson is one of those guys that benefits from it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, these two were also a pair at the uh, the 2021 World Championship, so they do have some chemistry together. Yes. And, uh, speaking of chemistry, our second line we have Marcus Lordson, and on the right, Matthias Loss uh, Lassen. This was a qualifying line. They played together. They're also uh, both playing for the Malmo Redhawks in the SHL. 
Uh, they're on the same team. Sometimes they play together. Sometimes they don't. They were aligned together also, not only the qualifier, but at the world champion uh, championship that Abo and Larson, the top pair, were at. So uh, we feel like we can throw them together again. Of course, uh, Lordson has a few AHL uh, seasons under his uh, under his uh, belt, but has spent most of his time in the SHL. And uh, uh, Larson has spent all of his time really uh, playing in Sweden. Neither of them have any NHL experience. And if you caught that, uh, me sliding through his stats there for the viewers, he had seven assists in three games in the Olympic qualifiers for Denmark. He'll be, mm-hmm. you know, had a great showing there, and hopefully they can lean on him. Four yeah, he is an offense points. guy. Third pair, we have the brother, the older brother by two years, Oliver Lordson, and Philip uh, Brugeser. Um, Oliver Lordson, while he's older than his brother, is also a lot bigger. <laughs> he's six foot six. He's a huge defenseman. Uh, plays that way too. Plays a pretty big style and uh, has you know incredible, just an incredible reach. And he'll be utilized a lot for uh, defense. He is he has played in the NHL uh, only a few games though. I think 15 games here in 2012 for the Philly uh, Flyers and one more game that year before he was sent down to the AHL and then went back overseas. Uh, he's a defensive guy. Brothers, the offensive one. He only has three goals uh, for the Malmo Red Hawk. Same team. Uh, yeah, and I think a good stable guy to have in your bottom uh, bottom pair defenseman. Uh, paired him up with Brugeser here, uh, 30 years old. <clears throat> Plays uh, currently in the, the ice ice HL, I believe. Uh, was in the DL, has moved to the ice HL. Um, yeah, he's you know I, I, again I. I a lot of these Denmark players have been through the Danish system a lot, so he has a lot of experience with the Danish team, as you can see, and he'll be utilized, I think, pretty heavily as well. And I don't know if you uh, you noticed there when going through the, the stats, but uh, in the DEL, there are actually two teams that are the Penguins. There's oh. Creffield, and then there's another one. They're the other one that uh, Burger Sir had yeah, uh, just played. Yeah, the Penguins or... and the Penguin. <laughs> yeah, right. There's there's two different Penguin uh, teams. I think that's just hilarious. And that uh, brings us to our final pairing, the extras. We have Nicholas B. Jensen and Emil Christensen. Uh, I think that either one of these two could really slide in to play on the right with Oliver Lordson. Uh, Nicholas B. J- Jensen, he had played with Lordson at the qualifiers. Well, Emil Christensen had played with uh, Oliver Lordson at uh, the World Championship, so they both have chemistry with Oliver Lordson. I think either could maybe slide into this third pairing, but it really goes to show just how uh, solid that top five is. Uh, Nicholas B. Jensen, he's 32 years old. He is the older guy, currently playing in the DEL. Lots of, he's a very strong defensive presence, while Emil Christensen... Uh, he's currently playing for, in the Ice HL for, uh, for the for the only Italian team, I believe, in the ice, in the Ice HL right now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you don't think of uh, Italy and hockey very often, but mm-hmm. there he is. Yep. Two Jensen's on the team. We are not done. Um, <laughs> first line for the forwards. Here we got Nikolai Meyer, a name that should be familiar, and Franz Nielsen, and Nick Olison. Uh, Franz Nielsen you know, is the biggest name on this team. Uh, has over 900 games of NHL experience, uh, most recently with the uh, Detroit Red Wings. I believe he was with the Islanders as well. He's he's their their top center without without a doubt. He's an older dude. I get it, but he still has 14 points uh, in 20 games with uh, the best. I think the top DEL team, uh, the Berlin team. Uh, he's 37. But I think he can still be very well and be the 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 Eric Stahl type player uh, for Dan- Denmark as uh, Stahl is for Canada. His wingers, we got Nikolai Meyer, uh, smaller left shot right wingers, 28 years old. Uh, neither of these, uh, this guy doesn't have any experience in the NHL, but he does have uh, you know big points the last couple of years in the two leagues he was in in Assat in 2020-21. He would 42 points in 53 games and 38 and 34 uh, for Vienna, the ISHL. So he's a scorer. And Nick Olison, 
as well. Another left shot, but I know he plays that right wing sometimes, so we put him here, 26 years old. Uh, plays for Brynäs IF, the SHL. He's played in the SHL for a few years now. Uh, another point per game kind of player. He's a little bit down this year, but previous years he's always been over a point per game. So we'll see if this can be the line that they go to for their offense. And on to our second line, which I am a huge fan of. We have two Ottawa Senators, but I'm going to get to them uh, second and third. On the left, we have Nicholas Jensen, not the last Jensen on this team. Down the middle, we have Peter Regan, and on the right wing, Mikkel Bodker. Uh, Nicholas Jensen, uh, you should uh, that should be a name that's fairly uh, familiar. He was a first-round pick back in 2011 by the Vancouver Canucks, and he is really hitting his stride this year with Jokerit in the KHL. He's another guy on this team from that uh, from that team. Uh, he I felt like he's a guy that maybe got thrown into the NHL too early. Didn't really have a chance to develop. He's 28 right now and I'm going to he's in like the prime of his career. I feel like he's a guy that uh is uh, could potentially get another a second NHL chance. Uh you know, come uh, the end of this tournament maybe. Uh or the end of the year cuz I know that his uh his contract is expiring soon. Uh down the middle Peter Regan, uh former Ottawa Senator. Uh, he brings a lot of energy. I've always liked this game. I loved uh, that they paired him with Daniel Alfredson in uh, the, the 2010 playoffs. He scored like a hat trick in one <laughs> game. So, uh, you know, he's got, um, he's uh, he performs really well in those like high pressure, you know, kind of games. So uh, I'm expecting him to be, uh, to hu- be a huge part of this, uh, of this uh, team. He also played for Jokerit as well. Uh, not this year, but uh, the past few years, he was their captain. So he does have a lot of experience with Nicholas Jensen and Mikkel Bodker on the right, another former Ottawa Senator, currently playing with the HC Logano in uh, the top Swiss National League. So for our top 10 pick in 2008, and he's really more of a scorer, but uh, this was a qualifying line. These three played together in the qualifiers. So uh, we have a good feeling they'll play together again. Yeah, and uh, third line, I believe, was also a qualifying line. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. Uh, We have Morton Paulson, Julian Jacobson, Jacobson maybe, and Patrick Russell. Uh, Paulson, we'll flip over here, yoink. 33 years old, left shot. Uh, Apparently really hardworking guy. Uh, he's been in Denmark for you know, a number of years now. He played a little bit in Alsvenskan. Um, never really bro- broke into like the high tier leagues in hockey. Uh, I wouldn't consider Denmark a high, like a top tier European league, not yet anyway. Uh, they are very much improving, but obviously the Alsvenskan is the S- Swedish second league. So always been that kind of player, hardworking, really good on a third line here. Julian Jacobsen. Uh, 34 years old. All three top line centers are over 34. I think 37 uh, for Nielsen, Peter Regan's 35, and Jacobson is 34. So we got some veteran veteran centers down the middle, which is never a bad thing. He's been the captain of his team in Denmark for years now. Uh, 31 points in 30 games over there, so can score, and had two points in three games during the Olympic qualifiers. Um and just rounding out this line, Patrick Russell, uh, a little bit younger, 29 years old, had a little bit of uh, North American experience. He's played six games. Oh, sorry, um, over uh, 51 games in the NHL. Um, I saw I saw the number six somewhere, and I think I just said six. Uh, <laughs> played, played for the Edmonton Oilers for a few years, most recently in 2019-20. Uh, Currently playing the SFL in Linkaping with 18 points over there. Had three points in the qualifiers. And just so I, my head is, he played 59 games. I was wrong again. 59 mm-hmm. games in the NHL at seven points. I felt like there was a lot of hype around Patrick Russell. I don't know um, if it, you know, kind of just faded. He didn't really score a lot at the NHL. So they kind of, you know, obviously if you don't score, they just hear your you know, yesterday's news by on the NHL standards. So. Yeah. That brings us to our fourth line. We have on the left, Matthias Asperup. Down the middle, Jesper Jensen, who is the last Jensen on this team. And down uh, on the right wing, Frederick Storm. Uh, 
Jesper Jensen and Frederick Storm, they played together in the 2021 World Championship, so we uh, felt like for chemistry's sake, we keep them together. Matthias Asperup, you were mentioning earlier, the, the, the Danish league is improving. Uh, Asperup's a guy who spent the majority of his career playing in Denmark, play, uh, you know, bounced around a few teams, but this year he's over a point per game for, you know, he's playing really well, and you, you gotta, I mean, he, he's scoring goals at a rate higher than he ever ever has before and uh, i'm hoping that you know uh when they bring that to the olympics you know every you know when you talk about team canada and the united states even their teams kind of lack a certain amount of depth but you know I, i'm hoping that a guy like asper who's been playing so well can maybe score something and show hey like you know like these danish players playing in a random danish small league can actually you know uh play pretty well and also i'm gonna cut you off can we talk about how his middle name is martini his middle name is martini wow i did not notice <laughs> he does have a sister who is currently playing for the danish women's olympic hockey team Very so cool. uh wish her luck yeah uh, down the middle, Jesper Jensen. Uh, he's currently playing in Denmark as well, but he spent the majority of his career playing in the SHL. He's been a scorer, but right now he's really more of a third-line kind of center. He's captain of the Frederick uh, Shaven Whitehawks last year. Brings a certain level of experience. Uh, and then Frederick Storm on the right. He uh, He's another guy who's pretty old, 32 years old. Spent a lot of time in the SHL as well. Currently in the DEL, where he is scoring the most he ever has scored uh, as well. A lot of these guys are on uh, career years from uh, what I've seen. Yeah, he scored a couple times in uh, the 40s. He did Denmark, you have to go all the way back to Denmark U20 in 2008-2009 uh, to find a similar year that he's having so far. Um, yeah, incredible year in the DEL. It's a pretty good league over there. Mm -hmm. And just as our extra guys, we have Matthias Bau Hansen and Morten Madsen. Uh, couldn't find really a spot for them. We felt that they were the clear, uh, clear extras here. Uh, Matthias Bau Hansen is 28 years old and is six foot seven. He is a huge, huge winger. Um, Played in, in Denmark, anyway, the last few years. Uh, played in the AHL a little bit at a cup of tea in the AHL, 17-18. Had 23 points over there, so not too bad in a, a pretty good pro league in the AHL. It gets a little bit underrated for talent. Um, 27 points, 23 games for the Herning Blue Fox Denmark League. So could sneak in if they really need some size or something for the game, depending on how they want to run their system, and I'm not sure exactly how the, how the coach wants to do it. Could definitely sneak in there. Uh, and Morton Madsen, another veteran, 35 years old, formerly a fourth-round pick of the Minnesota Wild all the way back in 2005. Um, more of a, more of an offensive guy than a defensive guy historically, but this year he only has one point, 23 SHL games. Not a, not a great points, you know, points-wise. Uh, more of a, you know the veteran leadership on this team, and uh, Denmark has a ton of that. They have. Lots and lots of veterans, and I think every one of these potential centers is over 34, 35 years old. So mm -hmm. um, we'll see how they do. It's an interesting team. What do you think? Yeah, with these uh, extra forwards, I know that uh, Matthias Bauhansen has a uh, is on the same team and sometimes plays on the same line as Morton Poulsen, who we have on the third line. Maybe he slips in there. He is a uh, pretty big, but uh, I've, I've kind of noticed a trend. You know, um with uh, Oliver Lordson, with uh, uh, Bau Hansen. If you're over six and a half feet, you'll just get a chance in the NHL or AHL. They'll just be like, well, you're big, you can't teach size. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's something to it. <laughs> yeah, there's something to the fact that you can't teach a guy to be six foot seven. So, uh, especially as a forward, we've seen big defensemen, strong defensemen. There's not a lot of six foot seven forwards kicking around that aren't just pure enforcers. So, mm -hmm. um, interesting team. I think they have the potential to, you know, do some sneaky things. I don't quite know if um, they're going to be very good, uh, you know, record-wise in the Olympics, um, but we'll see. We shall have to see. Yeah, I, I like this team. Uh, you know, I, I think that their decor is solid. Their top, I like their top five. I think uh, their top nine forwards are pretty good, and their coach Heinz Ehlers. 
is the father of Nikolai Ehlers. You know, he helped him get to where he is. I think that there's a, a sneaky amount of talent on uh, this team. And I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, I guess I kind of always root for an underdog. They might be the underdog I'm rooting for. Yeah, I've, I've always liked Denmark as a hockey country. They're in a good division to do a little bit of damage. They're with Czechia, Switzerland, and Russia. Um, or the Olympic athletes from Russia, or whatever they're called this year. Um, I think they can... I don't think they'll beat Russia. I think Russia's too good, too high skill. But I think they could have a chance against a team like Switzerland or Czechia. Uh, Czechia, I think, is pretty strong, but you never know with the Olympics. Who knows what's going to happen. So I like their chances to maybe pull off one game as an upset. But uh, let us know what you think. If you made it this far in the video, let us know what you think about this team. Uh, where we went wrong, if you know anything about uh, the Danish hockey uh, international teams. Um, or the coach and what he's generally done. I know this was the you know the Olympic qualifying game, so there's a chance that he just kind of rolls out the same lines as he as he did previously. But yeah, we'll see. I'm excited, and we're only a few days out from the men's uh, tournament starting. The women's tournament's already started. We're a bunch of games in. Uh, like Alex said at the start of the start of the video, if you want to see a lot of Olympic content, this channel is your place to be. I'm excited. Anything else? Nope. That is all. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.